The Synthesis of Sulfur Trioxide Attention! Phosphorus pentoxide, sulfuric acid and sulfur trioxide can cause severe chemical burns on the skin and eyes. Sulfur trioxide can cause irritation of the respiratory tract and reacts violently with water. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. The setup is a distillation apparatus with an oil bath and a dripping funnel. A thermometer is not needed. All joints were greased with Teflon grease because all other greases would be oxidized. As a substitute, Teflon sleeves could also be used. The receiving flask is cooled with an ice bath and to the vacuum adapter a gas washing flask is connected which will be filled with concentrated sulfuric acid. Later on it will be found out that the hose should also be secured with clamps. Then the receiving flask was placed on a scale and with a funnel a decent amount of phosphorus pentoxide was added. With its weight the amount of sulfuric acid needed could be calculated. For the 36 grams of phosphorus pentoxide 30 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid were needed. Which have then been added to the dripping funnel. To the bucket with the cooling water only a small amount of water was added so the temperature could be adjusted while the reaction takes place. When the oil bath had reached around 80 degrees C, the temperature of the hot plate was regulated to 200 degrees C, so the increase of temperature became slower. Then a part of the sulfuric acid was added dropwise. The following reaction takes place. The phosphorus pentoxide reacts with the sulfuric acid to form sulfur trioxide and mainly tetrametaphosphoric acid. This is only one of several chemical equations because phosphorus pentoxide could theoretically react with water until it forms phosphoric acid. In the beginning no sulfur trioxide did condense in the cooler but a thick vapor did form in the receiving flask. Simultaneously some trioxide left the apparatus at the vacuum adapter even though the hose was sitting very tight. Nevertheless this did only happen when the sulfuric acid was added and the formation of sulfur trioxide did increase, so it wasn't tried to seal the apparatus further. To increase the cooling ice was added to the cooling water. Immediately the sulfur trioxide began to condense. The sulfuric acid was added in portions while it was taken care of that the oil bath did only reach a maximum temperature of 200 degrees C. Then needle shaped crystals began to form in the condenser which was a sign that the temperature of the cooling water was too low. That's why boiling water was held close by to increase the temperature in such a case. But still more of the sulfur trioxide was crystallizing than melting. So all in all while the reaction was taking place several liters of boiling water were added to the cooling water. A hazard is that the condenser becomes clogged and the pressure builds up. When the vapor had settled in the receiving flask needle shaped crystals became visible. Due to the sulfur trioxide becoming solid right before dripping into the flask, the ending of the condenser was heated with a heat gun. A part of the trioxide did melt, but the rest kept sticking to the glass. The further addition of 15 milliliters of sulfuric acid had no big influence on the reaction. Only a small rest of the pentoxide that stuck to the wall of the flask became loose. So the reaction was obviously already done with two mole equivalents of sulfuric acid. To remove the receiving flask all water in the surrounding area was removed as good as possible and an empty flask was held close by. The sulfur trioxide was loosened with a glass rod.
Then the flask was closed with a greased glass stopper and the empty flask was connected to the apparatus. The receiving flask was weighed out with a clamp and stopper before the synthesis so to determine the yield was easy. 3.5 grams of sulfur trioxide were obtained which corresponds to a yield of 12% considering the water content of the sulfuric acid. The bad yield might be mainly due to the phosphorus pentoxide being several years old. The loss due to the leaking could only be a few percent because otherwise the amount of vapors would have been way higher. When taking apart the apparatus all traces of sulfur trioxide have to be dissolved in sulfuric acid before it can be flushed with water. Here it can be seen how violent even a few milligrams of sulfur trioxide react with water. The condition of the host does show how well sulfur trioxide can oxidize organic compounds which would also apply to ordinary grease. To stabilize the trioxide boric acid can be added because otherwise it would polymerize and would have to be distilled again for further use or it can be dissolved directly in sulfuric acid to prepare oleum. This was the synthesis of sulfur trioxide. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to know more about phosphorus pentoxide, watch my video about it here. Otherwise you can watch my newest video here.